I just invested more than $40,000 into five penny stocks. Five stocks I think could more than double my money over the next few years. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here and one of the most popular themes on the channel, penny stock investing. Most of you know I come from that venture capital background where the returns can be 30 and 50 times your investment with portfolio returns averaging 27% a year. But because of SEC accredited investor rules, most people can't invest in startups. The government limits these to only those with a million dollars net worth or making over $200,000 a year. That makes penny stock investing the best opportunity for Main Street investors. You'll find the same high growth opportunities in stocks of smaller companies that you're going to find with those startups and the same return potential. In fact, even though I still invest in startups and venture capital, I also invest in penny stocks and have over $40,000 in five stocks. I want to get started on our list of penny stocks, but stick around and later I'm going to show you what I'm looking for in penny stocks I buy. First up is the only dividend payer on the list and a unique opportunity, Gold Royalty Corporation, ticker GROI. The company acquires royalty, stream rights, and other interests in mines at different stages of the mining cycle for a balanced portfolio. Right now with just over half of its assets in Canada and a third in the United States. This is a different business model than a lot of mining companies you see. Royalty companies invest in mining projects for a percentage share of the revenue. That's off the top before the mining company covers its costs. So what you get is a leveraged exposure to the price of gold with a company that has very little operating costs. In fact, Gold Royalty employs just half a dozen executives to guide management and its investments. Those mining projects then are in turn managed by the best in the industry like Newmont, Barrick Gold, and Agnico Eagle. Of the 200 plus royalty deals, Gold Royalty has six already producing revenue and seven more that will start producing over the next five years. Now that alone is expected to grow revenue from $5 million this year to over $20 million through 2025, a fourfold increase in less than three years. And against that outlook for growth, shares are priced very cheaply at just 0.6 times net asset value. That's less than half the industry average. Even the smaller royalty companies generally get between 1 and 1.5 times NAV which means shares of gold royalty here could double just on a revaluation to the average. What really convinced me to buy shares here though was the management team, specifically CEO David Garofalo. Before coming to gold royalty, he served as CEO for Goldcore, once the world's largest gold miner from 2016 until its acquisition by Newmont in 2019. Before that, he served Agnico Eagle for 12 years as a CFO, a period that saw an 18-fold increase in the stock price. Now for me, that meant a lot of confidence in what management was saying and where the company could go for revenue. I bought 2,000 shares for just under $2.17 each for a $4,300 investment. And besides the upside potential in the shares with that growth theme that we'll see in all these penny stocks, this one is also a safety play. I'm already expecting a recession and the only question is how bad will it be? This is the one stock in the group that could benefit from a market crash as that exposure to gold as a safety asset. So I'll leave a link to the company's investor presentation in the description below if you want to check that out. Next on our penny stock list is going to be a special case here, shares of Republic First Bancor, ticker FRBK. This one is going to be more volatile than the rest of the group, here giving back 5% after a big rebound. Even giving back some of the recent move though, I'm up 23% on my $16,000 investment at $1.31 per share on March 31st. Shares here plunged 35% in March in a tragic case of mistaken identity, one I used to buy into the stock. Not only did the Philadelphia-based regional bank suffer from its bank crisis, but also as investors confused it with San Francisco-based First Republic, ticker FRC. But the banks could not be more different. While FRC is focused on those startup company deposits and needed a rescue from the FDIC, Republic First is focused on commercial and retail clients and is financially sound. The stock trades for just 0.42 times book value, a 59% discount to its valuation just one year ago today. Now that weakness in the regional banks is still going to be weighing on the shares and will only gradually recede, but this one still has some great upside over the next few months as investors realize their mistake and the financial health in this bank. Now I'll probably hold on to my shares until at least back to $2 a share, which would take it back to before the banking crisis price, though it could get back to maybe $3 a share or so. I'm not really in this one for the long term story. We'll get right back to our penny stock list, but there is a big difference in what I'm looking for in these first two stocks that I wanted to highlight. So as I mentioned, for that first Republic play, it's much more of a swing trading opportunity. These are rare market mispricings that you see where something breaks in the market or investor sentiment and, and lead to that short term opportunity. While researching the bank stocks during the crisis, it was obvious that there was something more going on with FRBK that 
while you'd expect to fall in the banking crisis, not nearly to the extent that it did. Just looking at it and knowing that often investors rush in to buy or sell a stock mistaking it for another, it was obvious what was happening here and that mispricing should then reverse itself over the next several weeks or months. So that's going to be a much shorter term investment idea than that idea for gold royalty or the other three penny stocks on our list. For these, I'm looking for good valuations on great growth stories that are going to develop over years. These are long-term investments. Now, I'll share some rules for penny stock investing later, but here, what I'm looking for in these long-term penny stocks is, is first a growth story, an industry or an opportunity that's going to take that company along with it for those double-digit annual growth. I also want to see a healthy balance sheet, enough cash for that the company can survive any market and have time it needs to grow into that story. Finally here, management is more important here than anywhere else. Management needs to not only be able to guide the company through that growth, but, but also because of the growth in the industry, has to be able to compete aggressively in its market. Back to our list though with CareCloud Inc, ticker CCLD, the smallest company on our list at just $51 million market cap. CareCloud is a new entrant into health information technology with a full suite of cloud-based solutions including records, practice management, patient experience, and monitoring, as well as the ability to design customized solutions for providers. That health information technology space is expected to grow at a 13% annualized pace to 2030, according to Datum Insights, and CareCloud has booked 34% annual revenue growth since 2017. Even better here, the company grew recurring revenue fourfold last year to $8 million. That is repeatable revenue, all while cutting customer acquisition costs in half. Now, like most IT companies, CareCloud is using an acquisition model to improve its software and services with some solid acquisitions over the last few years, including Meridian, a spinoff of GE Healthcare. But what's impressive here is that it's been able to do that without bloating the company with debt. CareCloud owes just $13.3 million in long-term debt against $9.3 million in balance sheet cash, so net debt of only $4 million, and this is a cash flow positive company. Management is guiding to $144 million in revenue this year for $26 million in earnings before interest, taxes, and depreciation. And shares are trading for just 0.38 times sales, which is unheard of for a growth company in a growing industry. I've got 800 shares here for a little over $2,700, which isn't a big investment, but even growing to a still small $1 billion company over the next five years, it would mean a $52,000 profit on this one. Here I've owned Invitae Corporation, ticker NVTA, for a little over a year, and while it's down quite a bit, I still love the long-term potential. Invitae is leading in that genetic testing and screening area of the market, focused initially on the oncology segment, but really expanding it through genetic information testing to answer questions about health from all age groups like, like pediatrics to fertility and diagnostics. Innovation has pushed the cost of multi-cancer and other gene screening down 95% from 2015 to just $1,500 today, and it's expected to fall another 80% to just $250 by 2025. Being able to test people at, at a younger age could potentially save more than 60,000 people a year in the US alone, and that means a massive increase in the market for screening and testing stocks. And here it looks like the trend is starting to show through with Invitae's results. The company blew past earnings expectations for the last two quarters by more than a third. During the quarter, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network updated its guidelines for colorectal cancer, removing some of the age group and, and cancer type restrictions that could open up increase in testing. The company here is estimating a $154 billion market opportunity across its four segments and is already one of the most advanced in genomic stocks for revenue. Revenue is expected to double over the next three years to $1 billion annually, and this is as the company improves its profitability as well and converts more of those sales to earnings. Against that upside growth, the stock has plunged from my cost basis of $4 a share. It's now trading for just 0.7 times sales though, and if it can hit that growth, this could be an $11 stock within the next few years. That would be a sales multiple of just three times on a billion dollars in revenue and an 8x return from here. We've still got one of my favorite penny stocks to highlight, one that jumped 331% a few years ago, but there are some very important rules to penny stock investing. Rules that are going to mean the difference between those double digit returns versus losing your money. First here is you want to build a portfolio of at least 10 to 15 penny stocks. These smaller and newer companies are extremely volatile and defined by those big wins and the big losses. In our penny stock portfolio on the channel, there are almost as many losers as there are winners, but it's on those triple digit winners that we've been able to book a 33% average return. 
You need that diversification across these different companies. Also, your penny stocks should be no more than about 20% of your total portfolio. Maybe this is just me as a lower risk investor, and it's gonna depend on how much risk you wanna handle, but I'd say no more than that 20 or 30% of your overall wealth should be in these kinds of small cap startup investments. Look at it this way. If you've got 20% of your portfolio across maybe 10 companies, it's about 2% in each. That means a failure in any one of these won't destroy your portfolio, but if it goes five or 10X, it's still gonna add significantly to your wealth. Finally here, you've gotta give those penny stocks time to grow into that long-term potential. If you look at Ryerson Holdings here, ticker RYI, our best performing penny stock up more than 700% since recommending it back in 2020. It took years to prove that performance. Nation, there is nothing worse than giving up on a penny stock, maybe even taking a loss just before it makes that big move higher. Hold on to these for at least three years. That means your winners and your losers give them time to grow into that thesis and you will not be disappointed. We've been following Stitch Fix, ticker SFIX, for a while here on the channel. I first recommended the e-commerce retailer back in 2019 at about $22 a share, just before the price rocketed up to $95 a share by 2021. It's since crashed with the rest of e-commerce last year, but I took the opportunity to buy 700 shares at just over $5 each. The company is an online fashion service that touches a lot of the disruptive ideas beyond e-commerce, including data analytics and AI. It's using data-driven algorithms and a human intuition to help match people with their perfect look. Customers create a profile that assesses their preferences and then matches them with a stylist, then powers the retail service and delivers a product. Now the trend in revenue has been lower as the company tries to drive that user growth, but that AI nature of the platform has been that it's been able to make more revenue per client because the more someone uses this app, the more their experience improves. Stitch Fix has $204 million in balance sheet cash against just $147 million in long-term debt and sales are expected to start growing again this year. Shares are trading here for just 0.28 times revenue. At that valuation, if shares don't jump over the next year, I expect the company to get an acquisition offer from a larger retailer. You see, any traditional apparel retailer would kill to have that kind of data-driven platform and the AI used by Stitch Fix, and it may only be a matter of time. Click on the video to the right for the 10 Reddit stocks that Wall Street is buying, retail stock favorites that even the hedge funds think will go higher. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.